Memes are king. I love looking at memes all day long. It's a big part of my life. And that's why we're here again doing Cursed Memes Part 2. You guys liked the Part 1 so much, make sure you go check it out if you haven't seen it yet, that we need to bring you guys a Part 2 video. And guess what? I am so happy to do it because my backlog and knowledge of memes is perfect for this video. I'm going to break down all the little pieces of memes. We're going to throw in a few challenges and stuff too because you know what? Challenges turn into memes and memes turn into challenges. It's a vicious cycle. They're all all kind of the same thing and we're gonna bring you a awesome list today make sure you guys like comment subscribe and hit the little notification bell and stick around for the whole list because I'm gonna be doing some more pet shout outs which you guys love so much and without taking any longer let's get into this list at number 10 we have the coronavirus this has been the most popular meme on the market there's memes about someone coughing there's memes about food there's memes about what the world would look like if this virus spreads to everything now the memes themselves don't kill anyone but they might make a few people think that this virus isn't serious. Some people might think the whole thing is just a joke and we could see this meme evolve, just like the virus might. Like we know people will do anything to get views. So what if people start doing the Corona challenge where they start going up to random people on the bus and trying to kiss them on the lips or they start eating bat meat to see if they could catch the virus like in some weird Russian roulette. We saw people eat Tide Pods and poison themselves. So it wouldn't take much for people to turn this into a meme because they would think it's so funny and it might bring them loads of content. And it could possibly bring the end of the world, which might might be the funniest way for the world to end in a meme format. That's hilarious. At number nine, we have Tide Pods. Now we just mentioned it in number 10, so we gotta bring it up now. This was one of the most bizarre challenges that turned into a meme and spread all the way to CNN. Kids all over the world started eating Tide Pods like they were biting into ravioli, and people were getting really sick. The cases of self-poisoning in America more than quadrupled in a year. That is insane. And to be honest, it was super funny. Not the part where people were actually getting sick, but watching everyone older than 25 freak out because they couldn't imagine why someone would do this to themselves. Also, I have no idea why people were doing it other than giving me something to watch on my lunch break. Thankfully, this one died out faster than it could kick off and people stopped trying to kill themselves with laundry soap. I would have liked to see someone do a review on Tide Pods, bite into them and be like, ooh, this one's a little sour with a hint of cinnamon. At number eight, we have the Kiki Challenge. Kiki, do you love me? Probably not. We have literally never met. And to be fair, I don't love you either. But all emotion aside, the challenge got turned into a meme and it was all over the internet with people letting their cars ghost drive on the road as they danced alongside them. It's no surprise that people ended up getting very hurt doing this. For the most part, this was just bumps and bruises with a few people trolling their friends. But there was one clip that actually got pretty bad. Anna Warden wanted to try her hand at this challenge and things didn't go as planned. She set up her phone in her car, she got her friend to drive, and everything should have been fine, but when she jumped out of the car, she fell and smacked her head on the ground. This caused her to fracture her skull and she needed surgery for this. She was able to recover, but she had major memory loss and had to learn how to read again. That is pretty rough. At number seven, we have Ashley before and after. This is proof of how vicious people on the internet can be, even when someone is trying to show their honest self. You think we would come together and support someone like that, but no, it seems like people want to hate on people, even when they're trying to be vulnerable. Ashley Van Penvenage did some sort of a social experiment on her friend's Instagram to show what women have to do to feel attractive. She showed the before and after pictures of herself wearing makeup. She suffered from pretty harsh acne and it was something she struggled with every day. Having a girl show this side of herself is very vulnerable and for some reason this got people super angry and they started calling her all sorts of horrible names and she got turned into a meme. Most of them were just really ripping on her looks. Jeez, people, she was just trying to be a good person. Just be honest for a moment, like, oh my God. Eventually, Ashley made a video to clap back at all these haters and talk about how this is exactly what she's talking about and the reason women need to wear loads of makeup just to fit in and feel acceptable. At number six, we have mac and cheese kid. If you become a drunk jerk and attack people, it should be no surprise that you get turned into a cursed meme. You might not remember Luke Gaddis' outburst that got turned into a meme about him demanding mac and cheese, but it was very big time. This spread all over the internet just like the savory pile of cheese and pasta that Luke could never get his hands on. <laughs> Yeah, that is only 10 seconds of the nine minute video that has him drunk in the cafeteria of his university demanding some jalapeno bacon mac and cheese. This kid won't let it go. They won't serve him because he came into the cafeteria drunk with an open bottle of booze and it's a university campus. So this is a very reasonable thing to happen to deny him service. This then leads to Gaddy getting arrested and expelled from the university and then turned into a meme and the perfect example of how not to conduct yourself anywhere. I don't know what kind of life you live where you 
think you can just yell out for mac and cheese and it's gonna fall into your lap like you're some kind of king. At number five, we have the snorting challenge. <laughs> this one grosses me out. I don't know where you guys draw the line between challenge and meme, but for me, they're kind of the same thing. As I said before, these things kind of live together because one infects the other and they both kind of grow and feed off each other. And that's why I have a few challenges on this list. And the snorting challenge had to be one of the most crazy and deadly challenges I have ever seen. And it was just generally stupid, but it was hilarious too. It's where you would take a condom, you would put it in your nose, and you would snort it up, and you would pull it out of your mouth. I think there are better ways to clear your sinuses. Like who would actually do this? Well, actually thousands of people would do it. You are just asking to choke to death when you're doing something like this. Like I can't think of a worse way to use a condom. They're meant to be used for fun and protection, not almost killing yourself. And this is one I actually saw live. I was in a bar and some girl thought it would be a good idea to do this challenge while sitting right at the bar. A group of people formed around her because we are not going to miss this for the world. She then snorted it up. She was halfway done pulling it out of her mouth and then she puked all over the bar. And I was so happy I saw it. At number four, we have Heidi Yen's family. You do one ad and it ruins your life. Heidi went to do an ad for a plastic surgery company and it was just supposed to be a photo shoot with a family and it seemed harmless. Then the ad came out. It showed Heidi in the ad with her commercial husband and with her commercial kids. But the commercial distorted the kids' faces to make it seem like Heidi had had plastic surgery and that's what she looked like in real life. Then the ad got turned into a meme and everyone thought it was real. Heidi was working as an actress and this destroyed her career. The irony in this whole situation is Heidi had never had plastic surgery. At number three, we have the tiny man. A guy in a bagel shop in New York decided to have a public freak out and the whole internet loved it. It's everything you want. A jerk gets mad. He's rude to people. You start to hate him. And then right when you think there is no hope, someone serves him his just desserts. Huh? I'm not standing, pal. Oh, no. Oh, no. You shut up too. Just shut up. This guy became a meme so fast. He was all over the internet and became the poster boy for small angry men everywhere. He was everywhere. He was on the news. He was on TMZ. This guy had his 15 minutes of fame and even that didn't help him get over his little man syndrome. And number two, we have Coney 2012. At first look, this seemed like it was one of the most noble moments you could ever think of. Someone wanted to stop a warlord who had taken children and turned them into child soldiers. How could you not support something like this? It's a beautiful thing. It all started with Jason Russell who made a video breaking down the monster that is Joseph Coney and why he should be stopped. He opened up a program for people to donate and then posted the video. The video turned out to be one of the most viral things the world has ever seen. Then the memes started popping out of everywhere. This is when the memes still had that like black border around them and they used classic characters like Bad Luck Brian, that was a great time. But then here's what happened. Even though this was a noble cause, there was zero game plan. Money was given to Jason, he didn't know what to do with it, and then people started getting super mad at Jason, and with having to endlessly defend himself over the internet, he eventually had a mental breakdown and was running around the streets of San Diego naked. Then the helpful meme of Coney 2012 turned into a joke and the whole program was dead. At number one, we have Pepe the Frog. He was just such a little cute frog who you could see all over the internet in all kinds a meme. People would take Pepe and edit him into every meme that has ever been. They would use him in happy memes, they would use him in sad memes, pointless memes. It didn't matter what came up, you could take the little frogman and force him into any situation and it would work perfectly. But then everything changed when the 2016 election kicked off. There were some serious opposing groups. Obviously it is an election, but this one was a little bit more radical than we have seen in recent years. There was the far left that had Antifa and the far right that had the alt-right. I don't think either side represents their parties, but they were all over the news because people like to watch salacious things on the news and people would rather watch something titillating than realistic. And the alt-right took the little Pepe and started using him as their post Boy. Everything to do with radical right wing movements and memes was Pepe. Pepe's creator Matt Fury was appalled and ended up killing the character in the comic strip that he originated from. That is pretty wild. Alright everyone, that is our list. Thank you all so much for tuning in and as promised I'm going to be doing some pet shoutouts. Remember, if you want me to shout out your pet, you can hit me up on Instagram. I pick new pets every day, so if you don't get picked one day, message back another day. And without taking any longer, let's shout out some pets. First we have Anna's Bunny. Her name is Aurora and she is so so cute. I love her little fluff going on all over the place. It's great. Then we got Ruru. This guy looks like he just woke up from the best nap. After that, we have Sora and Leo. I don't think there's any stronger bond than the bond between two dogs. They, when, when dogs become friends, they're the best friends forever. Next, we got Bubba. That guy has some awesome hair. He should be in a shampoo commercial. 
Then we have the hamster Snow. I love this little guy in his little house. He's looking so cute. And finally, we have Garfield Jr. This guy is giving off some major Garfield vibes. Look at me, so chill. All right, everyone, that is our list. Thank you all so much for tuning in. As always, I would love it if you could like, comment, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell. Until next time, I've been Shade Arena, and make us do a part three. Share this video with everyone. I love doing this meme stuff. Bye.